In the last video, I began to write my very own chess engine. And by the end of it, I had the chess engine equivalent of a Hello World program. I had written just enough code to have it accepted by QChess and it played its first move successfully. That move, e2, e4, was a hard-coded reply to the go command. And so, as soon as it gets asked for a second move, it gets disconnected for giving an invalid reply. In this video, I hope to get it to play more than one move, not good ones, but legal ones, so that we don't get immediately disconnected for rule violations. To find out how to do that, I have uh, set up a game where the chess engine Stockfish plays itself and we will be able to look at the log file and figure out more about the protocol. Now looking at the log file, first the two engines are set up here and here and when they are finally ready, they give the ready OK command here uh, and here and the position is uh, specified as a starting position. And now the first engine is asked um, to compute its first move it wants to make, it updates the client on the status of the search with this info stuff going on here and finally replies with the best move command e2, e4 and that's the move that's, uh, that it wants to play. Now the position of the board is changed, it's a start position modified by the move e2, e4 and with this information we can ask the second engine to uh, compute a move which it does and finally replies with uh, best move is e7, e5 and again the starting position is now modified by two moves so that's the pattern here the position is always uh, given as start position and then uh, the history of all moves that have been played and if we follow this command through the lock we can uh, basically follow the game being played there's always a best move command given and then a new starting position and a go command to ask the next player to make a move. And that's really uh, the pattern here. So we follow through the game and finally the last move that is being played is f8, f5 and then the game concludes. If we want our own engine to take part in this back and forth of position and best move commands, we need it to be able to pass any given position and have an internal model of the current board state. So I created an enumeration with all the pieces that exist in chess, including a piece representing an empty square called none. And I created a board class that's basically a wrapper around an array of such pieces. That area is of length 64, matching the 64 squares on a chess board. And I added a struct to represent moves on the board by indicating the square that the move starts on and the square that it ends on. And there's an extra field for promotion moves. And then I gave the board class a method called play that takes a move as an argument and then modifies the board state accordingly. The UECI spec explains how to encode moves when talking to the engine. The format is called a uh, long algebraic notation. Well, you can find all the details on Wikipedia, for example, but the idea is that each square on the board is identified by a letter and a number. And to specify a move, we combine two such coordinates. And a fifth character may be used for promotion and indicate the piece you want your pawn uh, to promote to. So that's the basic idea. And yeah, of course, we need a bit of uh, code to be able to pass uh, these um, encoded strings and create our uh, move structs. To help readability of the code, I've put all the notation related logic into helper methods in a notation static class. And with them, we can convert um, basically back and forth between human readable strings as the UCI uses them and the representations our code uses. And at this point, I really wanted to test and debug the code I had written so far. Like, I really wish to be able to visualize any given board state and to interact with it using these funny move strings. And yeah, so I added a new project to the solution that I call Chessboard. 
soon as we can print the board state to the console, making an interactive chessboard using the command line is really easy. We first create a loop so we can play multiple turns and each iteration we go to the console and read the user input. The user is expected to type in a move and then we can call the play method on our board and pass a move instance freshly constructed uh, from the user input. And now we only need to print the new board state and, and that's all we need to basically play chess. We get to see our board and we can type in the move we want to make and then we get to see how the board changes. Having our little uh, chess board now, what we can do is to take the log file we got from QChess earlier when the two Stockfish instances uh, were playing each other. And we can look at the move history. So the sequence of all the moves that have been played by the black and white alternating. And we will enter them one by one into our, um, our chessboard program. And then ideally we can see the same game unfolding if everything works and uh, if there are no bugs. Then we should arrive at the same end state. But uh, yeah, there's a problem already. And that's that it is incredibly boring and time consuming to enter all the moves by hand. So let's uh, change that quickly. With uh, this change, we can now run all the moves at once and compare the end position. Yeah, but uh, sadly, it's not the same. And after examining the first moves closely, you can see that the problem is e1, g1. It's a castling move and the king moves correctly by two squares, but the move of the rook is nowhere in the log, so it's meant uh, to happen implicitly. And of course it doesn't because I never implemented it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the next step. To deal with this, I will now check after each move if it was a castling move, so I can generate a second move for the rook if necessary. And this castling method will have to test two things. First, whether the moving piece was the king, and second, whether the king's target square is one of the four squares that trigger castling. And this is how it looks in the code. There are four if conditions, one for each potential castling move, and I have a few statics defined to help readability. So both for moves uh, that trigger the castling and for the rook moves associated with it. With castling implemented now, we can try again to reach the final position of the stockfish game. Hopefully there are no further bugs. And um, yeah, yeah, I think this looks promising. Pawn, pawn. King, pawn, queen, king. Perfect. Now we can finally return to the chess engine project, because now we are able to make sense of the position command and all its arguments. We can recreate the board state from the step position and the move history. And that means that when the go command is received, we actually have a chance now to reply with the legal move based on our hopefully correct understanding of the current game state. But we are not quite there yet. We still need to figure out how to generate a list of legal moves. And after picking one, we have to encode it as a UCI compatible string. The getLegalMoves method of the board class iterates over all 64 squares of the board. First we check if there's a piece on the square, then we check if it's of the correct color, which is specified by the boolean white moves next. So if there's a piece of the right color, then it's passed to add little moves. And in there we find a switch case and the only piece currently handled is the pawn. So only pawn moves will be generated for now. And also because black pawns can only move down and uh, white pawns can only move up the ranks, they are handled separately. So at white pawn moves and at black pawn moves, they are really similar, but not exactly the same. What they do though is that they check the square and the move direction of the pawn and if it's free we assume that we can go there and generate a move. 
So that's all very rudimentary and only produces a subset of all the legal moves. But we need to tackle this step by step. The goal for now is only to get our engine to play a few legal moves, more than it could do before, where it was immediately disconnected for trying to uh, move the hard-coded E2, E4 twice. So now that we can generate a list of legal moves, we just need to pick one. We take one randomly for now, and then we have to convert it to a UCI-compatible string to send it to QChess using the best move command. For the string encoding, we will override the two-string methods that every C-sharp object has already. And then we will just do the inverse of what the move constructor does when it receives a move in the UCI notation. We will use our notation helper class to convert the square indices back into names, concatenate them, and if necessary append a character indicating a promotion. And that's it. So, finally. We are now at a point where we should be able to compile a version of the chess engine that is prepared to engage in the fundamental exchange between client and engine, which is the reception of a position and then sending back a move. Now, let's set up a game in QChess and just play a few moves. Yeah, it works, it works. So, we can play our moves and the engine responds immediately. And it's not putting up much of a fight as it still only knows how to move pawns, not even how to attack with them. But it plays legal moves. At least until you put Black's King in check. Then our engine still wants to move a pawn and of course that's illegal and the game is over. I confess I didn't think much about it when I started to give the board class a get legal moves method, but now I've got the feeling that's going to be a lot trickier than I thought. Finding all the legal moves for any given board state, that's going to be the big topic of the next video. If you want to have a look at all the code we've got so far, or maybe play a few moves against the current version of Minimal Chess, then there's a GitHub link in the description. So long, thanks for watching. It's your game. Take it.